thing the youth are going to be sharing their gifts and graces. And to begin with, Madison Luce, she's going to open up by playing the piano. She's going to offer her gift. And while she does that, we'll light the candles, and then the youth bells will play. So let us worship the Lord.
Good morning. I'm Jake Brooks, the youth minister, and this is Jenna and Gabby. And we're going to sing some songs for you guys, so if you want to stand and sing with us, that'd be awesome. So this next one is a new one, so you guys can have a seat if you want. Um, and if you catch on, definitely sing along. Um, either way, this is something we do at the Vine, and we just wanted to share that with you all. So here we go.
Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. What's this? You wrap yourself with light as with a cloak. You lay the beams of your chambers in the waters above. You make the winds your messengers. You have the you have set the earth upon its foundations. You covered it with the deep as with a mantle. Let's join our hands and pray. Dear God, help us to focus our attention on you. Help us to remember all of the things you've done for us. You created us. You parted the waters for us. From destroying cities, healing men, feeding thousands, restoring life, making the sun stand still, making the blind see, the deaf hear, resurrecting your son, it was all for us. It was also for us that you gave your one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And it was your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us how to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom power and the glory forever. Amen.
this service and really every time we do youth weekend and I guess in general as a ministry is incorporate people from multiple generations in any way we can so we have Joey Ott here you probably know him he's a man about town uh, <laughs> I don't know what that means um, <clears throat> but he's been um, I mean attending Grace for a while and being involved in the youth ministry for I mean, I've been here for four years so he's probably been involved in three of those four at least um, and Maggie Woods, one of our student leader alumni, I guess you could say, but uh, you're still a leader. So she's going to be interviewing Joey. Uh, but we just really wanted to, um, like I said, involve multiple generations. And, and we try to do that in, in everything we do, even like Roots on a Sunday night. Sure, it's for teenagers, but there are adults there too. It's not just uh, us adults providing entertainment. It's we're doing all these things together. You know, there's a, there's a game, we're playing the game together. If there's a meal, we're eating a meal together. If there's a lesson and a discussion, we're, we're learning and talking about it together. And so if we do youth weekends, we've got to include everyone, right? And so Maggie, if you want to take it away. How long have you been involved in the youth ministry? Well, um, if Jake's only been here for four years, I think he yeah. brought me in, or we, I, he recruited me, I guess. I don't sure. know. I, I approached him. Any of the above. Uh, it was fate. <laughs> it was fate. Um, I or guess it's Amanda been about... saying this is what you're doing. My answer was, was uh, about four to five years, but I guess it's been three or four, so... I've only... I've been here four. Okay, so, so it's probably about three or four years. Um, what is your specific role in the ministry, and what are some special things you do as part of that role? I've had several unofficial roles, um, and also some official roles. Uh, some unofficial roles, I've just got some of the youth together to play basketball over at Webb a couple times, um, just being involved in roots uh, here and there on Sunday nights. Um, I'm on, what's the official leadership team? That's it, called? official leadership team. We meet, uh, we meet about once a month, um, but uh, yeah, so just different roles. Um, I can't remember what else I've done, but I've served in multiple small roles here and there, either more up front in front of the kids or kind of behind the scenes or obviously with, involved with them. What made you decide to get involved? Uh, for me, just really passing the torch. So I've had several uh, people who influenced me uh, when I was a, a youth. And uh, again, I just wanted to be there for any kind of youth that might need or uh, just be seeking that direction from, uh, from an adult. In what ways have you noticed any changes in your own life due to the volunteer role? Um, I catch myself thinking about uh, the, the youth I've had relationships with. Um, really, I learn from them as well uh, when I sit down one-on-one -on -one with them or even uh, on a root session on a Sunday night, whether it's through the lesson that's provided. Uh, sometimes it's by Jake, sometimes it's by youth, sometimes it's by other adults. Uh, but again, just I learned more about even my my work life, uh, just how I treat others at work because the youth talk about or speak about um, how they interact with others at school. So I kind of take that back to work as well. So I, I get as much out of it as I give in, I think. You also learn how to be cool, right? Most definitely. Would you be willing to share a story about a time when you feel like you or the ministry in general made a real impact in someone's life? 
Yeah, so I mentioned a couple uh, mentoring opportunities that I've had. Um, this one individual, uh, we, we talked a lot about uh, just just ordinary stuff, kind of chit-chat, but then uh, the discussions got more into like college, should he or she go to college and or, or not, uh, so I kind of just talk through some of that, really just kind of be there to, to listen. Um, and I, you know, shared my story of, of what I did and, and how I came to make those decisions for myself. And I like to think that made a difference. Um, and uh, again, others, um, just again, I just enjoy being with the youth um, on, on Sunday evenings. If someone was thinking about serving in the youth ministry, what would you say to convince them that it's worth it? Um, I'll leave out the worth it part for now, but um, I mean, e even just today in the first 30 minutes, 35 minutes of this service, you've seen that uh, we have youth that have several different talents. Um, it takes a lot of guts to stand up here by yourself and sing a song. Uh, I wouldn't do it even at my age, but um, that's something that Jake really, uh, in, in the whole curriculum that Jake's created um, around the youth is it stresses that every individual has their own gifts. Um, not every adult has the gift of interacting with kids. Uh, so I would encourage you, if you even have even any thought that you might want to help, reach out to Jake and have that discussion of in what way can you help. Uh, you don't have to be involved in Roots every single Sunday. I've got three kids and sometimes one kid has two different activities on the same day, so we're really busy. Uh, it, it's not a commitment to every Sunday. Um, it could be a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff. It could be just serving a meal once a month uh, at the Roots. Um, different uh, higher strategy of how we want to or where we want to take the program over the next few years. Uh, there's different, different ways that you can help, so I would just encourage you to get rid of the stigma that might be in your mind that, oh, I'm too busy, I just can't, you know, go every Sunday night. Or, or too old. Or too You're old. too old. No, not too old. Um, so, but, but in terms of how it's worth it, it's definitely worth it because if you can kind of influence just one youth uh, in a positive way, I mean, that's definitely worth it because it's going to have ripple effects uh, through their lives, not just in the short term, but also the long term. And, and the kind of like to springboard off of that, like I was saying before, I mean, it's it's not you doing this task that I want done, you know, it's, it's us serving together. I mean, we are a church community, and I feel like a, a big part of youth ministry is, is connecting the youth to the greater church. Um, and so sometimes, you know, we have to come up here and do Youth Weekend and, and connect with you all in this way, and then maybe in other times you all come to us and connect and and hopefully the overall goal is that we're just doing ministry together. Um, and, that, and that's really what we're trying to do. And, and that, that can look like anything, like Joey was saying. So, um, Anybody have anything else for the greater good? No? All right. Well, thank you. Thanks, Maggie. And Joey. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you, Joey. A man about town that. All right. Some wise words were shared just then. Um, it takes a community to help shape each and every one of us, actually. Um, the Christian faith is not a solo journey. It's meant to be taken together as a community. And maybe you cannot uh, do a Sunday night with the roots, but we certainly can all give of our resources to help the youth. Or we can all pray for our youth. So there's different ways we all can participate in God's very own life and mission through uh, Grace Church. And so we give God thanks for that and the opportunities we all have to be a part of that mission. Well, at this time, uh, the young people, the ushers will come forward and we're going to receive the offering and continue to give God thanks for the gift of community and the ways we can be a part of God's mission. Guys, you want to come forward and we'll share the offering. Thank you. 
Sabbath meal with one of the top leaders of the Pharisees, all the guests had their eyes on him, watching his every move. Right before him was a man hugely swollen in his joints. So Jesus asked the religious scholars and the Pharisees present, Is it permitted to heal on the Sabbath, yes or no? They were silent. So he took the man, healed him, and sent him on his way. Then he said, Is there anyone here who, if a child or animal fell down a well, wouldn't rush to pull him out immediately, not asking whether or not it was the Sabbath. They were stumped. There was nothing they could say to that. He went on to tell a story to the guests around the table, noticing how each of them tried to elbow into the place of honor. He said, when someone invites you to dinner, do not take the place of honor. Somebody more important than you might have been invited by the host. Then he'll say, you can call out in front of everybody, you are in the wrong place. The place of honor belongs to this man. Red-faced, you will have to make your way to the very last table, the only place left. When you are invited to dinner, go and sit in the last place. Then when the host comes to you, he may be very well said, friend, come up front. That will give you the dinner guests something to talk about. What I am saying is, if you walk around with your nose in the ear, you're going to end up flat on your face. But if you contend to be simply yourself, you'll be more than yourself. When you turn to the host, the next time you put on a dinner, don't just invite your friends and family and rich neighbors, the kind of people who will return the favor. Invite some people who will never get invited out, the misfits from the wrong side of the tracks. You'll be, an experience, a blessing. They won't be able to return the favor, but the favor will be returned. Oh, how it will be returned at the resurrection of God's people.
I'd like to invite the children forward for children's time. Imagine there is a new kid at school. This kid in lo is lonely and doesn't have anyone to talk to. Wouldn't you be sad if you were that new kid? Now imagine that it's lunchtime. This new kid still doesn't have anyone to sit with and you notice that you have an open seat close to you. You still might be unsure as to whether or not you should invite them. Why would you be unsure? Maybe you don't know what your friends would think of you if you were to talk to this new kid that no one else knew. In the scripture, though, Jesus says, though, that you should not only invite your friends to eat with you, but also those who don't have anyone else to eat with, those who might seem new or odd or you're unsure of. But when you're unsure of something, you should think of what Jesus would do and invite them to sit with you. It, don't you think that they would be a lot happier if they had someone else to eat with? That's it. Please join me in our closing prayer. Dear God, we pray that you'll keep us safe on our way home and that you will bless us with health and well-being for the rest of the year. Amen.